Yo everyone, hello. We're gonna do a new video, new type of video for at least my Valorant content, because we're gonna do a patch nose review. I was doing that a lot in TFT and I was very happy with that because there were so many changes and Valorant typically were, well, didn't have many changes in the patch notes. But Valorant patch nose 3.0, they are absolutely nuts. There's a lot of stuff happening. Uh, it's actually quite insane. So we're gonna go through it. It's gonna be a long video, so bear with me, okay? So... We're going to talk about the Freo changes. There's a lot of stuff going on over here. So we're just going to go through, you know, whatever. We're just going to go through everything. All agents, signature abilities now only provide a minimum of one charge per round instead of accumulating charge every round. For example, if you have two charge signature abilities on your end, round uh, on the end of the round with one charge remaining, you will not gain additional charge. Charges gained from cooldowns are not always temporary and visibility returns faster in the fatal period of flashes, of all flashes. So when it comes to the reg regeneration of your main skill, I think this is a, a huge uh, change for the economy of the game. It uh, basically makes you hungry for cash. Right, you are not able as a brimstone, as a sky in the past, an example because of the three flashes, right, or, or the omen. You are not able to um, build up your economy by playing smart with your utility. So you you basically you could have just saved a lot of cash by an, an example not flashing too many times and then just building up your three three flashes. In, and save like two hundred credits over two rounds. Uh, so this is actually super huge. And it will impact, most likely, Brimstone the most. But we're going to talk about that a little bit in the future. But I like the change. I like the change because it, it actually puts a lot of um, emphasis on people playing smart, which is great. All right, let's jump into the Astra changes. Astra um, is an incredibly popular at higher levels of play, and we felt that a few of our play patterns are difficult to respond to round over round. We want Astra to be potent, potent, at applying map-wide pressure, but she's able to deal that much too frequently and without much, much counterplay or cost. These changes aim to add more counterplay on barrier drop and provide much longer and clearer cooldown windows after Astra uses or recalls her stars. So Nova pulls, uh, so this stun, has its cooldown bounced up from 12 to 25, and the gravity well cooldown time increased from 12 to 25 as well. Uh, funnily enough, this was exactly the same, uh, sorry, not exactly, I proposed 24 seconds before I saw the, the changes. Uh, but this was like the main way of nerfing her effectiveness because people were just spamming gravity wells and, and nova pulses at the beginning of a round to gain control of certain areas that allowed you to, an example, farm ultimate orbs. So this is a huge change because you cannot essentially just use them at the beginning of a round because you know then you're not going to push aside for next 25 seconds, which is a huge change. But even a bigger change is the stars and astral form change. So now... Uh, stars are now inactive when played during the buy phase. When the barrier drops, her stars charge for 1.4 seconds before becoming active and usable. This is a huge change because, uh, you know, the main strategy was, as I explained, using the gravity well in Nova Pulse at the beginning of the round. Now we can't do that. It's going to take 1.4 seconds. And 1.4 seconds, your opponents will be way, 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 just far away from the starting point of the barrier. So this is a huge change. You pair that up with the cooldown increase, and essentially Astra is literally a different agent right now. You cannot play it the same way. You have to find a new playstyle that will fit. Um, on attack, Astra can now see the spike location in Astral form. The representation doesn't animate, so it will not provide additional info on the status of the spike. This should be the, you know, this should have been implemented in the beginning of the of of um, of the patch when she was introduced, but it was bugged. And people could see if the spike is going up and down. So this is, uh, they just basically fixed that bug right now. A recall cooldown increase from 8 to 15 seconds. Huge change. And uh, this, uh, you know, the fake outs to make the smokes for two seconds that just, you know, recall your 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 stars essentially were used to, to gain a lot of um, uncertainty uh, upon your enemies because they never knew if you crossed the, uh, the angle that was, uh, you know, faked out or not. So now you're not going to just spend that mindlessly because 8 seconds was nothing, literally nothing. Uh, like you can just use a star, fake it out. It's an 8 second uh, delay on a 2 second smoke. So essentially you have 6 seconds ineffectiveness on a skill. Like that's absolutely nuts. This could have been a skill. 
by its own, you know, because it's so powerful. But now it's increased to 15, so you can just mindlessly use it. Uh, so in general, Astra becomes way more uh, decision-based instead of just being spammy, just like Jet uh, was in the past as well, and will not be in 3.0. Uh, granted, signature charges decrease from 2 to 1, but the cost decreased by uh, 50. So, you... This was also another problem with uh, Astra. Basically, when you were playing um, uh, Eco or Half by Rounds, you could farm your star, so you don't have to s uh, essentially spend almost any cash on a full by round. Now, you're not going to be able to build those up, so you actually need to spend your credits to build up your stars, which puts Astra, again, as any other character, in a spot where you actually have to think about your economy and your utility, otherwise you're going to be hungry for it. So those are, those are good changes. Those are good changes, and they promote knowledge about the game. So, essentially, it's going to make ranked ha harder for you, because those people will be, you know, they're not going to have a clue how to play. <laughs> now, Breach. The introduction of KO warrants a tuning pass on our other initiators. For Breach, we're removing his third flash charge and attempting to spread impact across his kit. <coughs> I'm sorry for that. The update to his other abilities should provide more reliable outputs for Breach and his allies. Along with this, some abilities are getting shorter cast commitments and the speed of his flashpoint projectiles being slowed to give Breach a chance to re-equip his weapon work of his tools. Big changes to Breach, I think, I think like he's actually way better than he was before. So let's talk about it. Flashpoint, his flash. From whoops, from 3 to 2, they also got increased in price from 200 to 50, 250, and projectile speed decreased from 2.5k to 2k. Now, his flash, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to actually turn around from flashes because the effect is fading away faster, so it's easier to dodge flashes, and because of the breach, flash speed is slower by a significant amount. You're, you're going to actually have an easier time to dodge that flash as well, but at the same time, now Breach also pulls up his weapon fast. Now, it isn't mentioned in this spot here that his, uh, like, you know, in fault line, you have it an equip time after firing decreased from one second to 700 milliseconds. So this is mentioned in, in the other skills, but it's not mentioned in Flashpoint, which makes me think that either they forgot or it didn't get changed. And the only way of, of pulling out your weapon faster is by having his, his uh, speed decrease, like they say here, right? So my ability is getting shorter cast commitments and the speed of his flashpoint project is being slowed to give Breach a chance to re-equip his weapon and work off his tools. So this makes me think that there's no uh, re-equip uh, weapon um, uh, speed timer change, but you get to pull it out faster quote unquote because your projectile is slower so this gives more time your opponents to react while you have more time to actually go out with your flash but you need to take into account that if you're standing next to a wall there's no travel time so essentially if you're standing next to a wall or next to the object that you want to flash there will be literally no difference uh before the patch and after the patch for you unless they forgot to put a change in the actual unequip time decrease. Uh, but I, I guess we get to know that after the patch is released in EU, and we're going to test it out, right? It's going to be hard to test it out. But anyway, I'm going to ask the devs about it. Now, Fault Line, it actually got huge buff. It's insane. The Fault Line, this is the rechargeable uh, skill, and now it actually feels like super impactful. It was always pretty tough to use it because it was such a time commitment and it didn't really clear many angles, it didn't really put that much pressure on your opponents. Right now, it charges way faster. It's one second. And if you just click it, it's long enough. It has it has enough coverage for you to be impactful just by clicking it once and going back to your weapon so you don't lose much time on using it. Uh, the wide increase is big. It's by 20, over 20%. Uh, it's actually... Uh, it's actually 25% increase. So the wide... The wide... How do you say that word? It's hard for me to... As a Polish person. Anyway, like you could... You can probably cover entire hookah on B with just this fault line and affect every single corner. We're going to check this out tomorrow, but I think it's going to affect the entirety of the hookah, which is a big deal when you want to push that on bind, right? Uh, the wind-up time is decreased by 300 milliseconds. 300 milliseconds is is huge. Average 
uh, reaction time of a human, be human being is 220 milliseconds, right? So this literally gives you more time than a person needs to react. So it's, it's a huge buff. It's a huge buff because it will actually make you easier uh, to catch someone with that stun. And the concussion is also increased by 500 milliseconds, which gives you enough time to just have that your reaction time, right? Or halfway equip your weapon after you pull it out, right? Especially since your um, unequipped time after the firing decreased by 300 milliseconds. So all of that warrants the increase of five seconds cooldown because it's actually a very powerful tool now. Aftershock um, deals now three times damage, 60, instead of just one big boopa that deals 115, right? Or whatever it deals. Explosion rate is increased by four, uh, what is this? That's like 15%, uh, which is big, which is big because it was already huge, right? Uh, you have faster and equip, and the cost got increased by 200. So I feel like he's expensive. But he's not more expensive, basically, than before. He has more identity. I feel like all of those changes actually make uh, Breach very nice to play, very fluid to play. I cannot actually wait to try him out. And I feel like the Aftershock is actually now very impactful after to a post-plan situation as well, because it it has such a um, such a huge coverage time, right? You have 600 milliseconds between each blast, and you have three blasts. So you essentially gain a 1.2 second effect uh, plus the actual explosion, right? So you have two uh, intervals between the explosions and then the third explosion does the effect. So in general, you probably gain around like 1.4, 1.5 seconds on that explosion. With the wind-up time, when you do that, it's essentially like probably around four to five seconds of an actual like post plan situation time, right? This is pretty huge. Uh, so don't be surprised to see an increase in breach popularity. And also his rolling thunder is basically so big it covers everything. You know, it's like the 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 widest point of his previous ultimate is now his entire ultimate. So you cover the entire site. You just go in and you just you you bop the entire site. I don't think, apart from Breeze, of course, right? Apart from Breeze, uh, and maybe one corner on Icebox, you're gonna affect everything. It's actually nuts. So, Breach, huge buff, and we're gonna see more Breach players, uh, most likely, at least those people that want to learn or were already playing Breach, uh, we're gonna see that. Now, Brimston, as I said, he, got, he gets a nerf, but it's not mentioned here. Uh, the cost increase is just a little bit, uh, you know, uh, the the molly, molly is very powerful, so I understand why they uh, did the 50 credits increase, although I don't really agree with now the price of the stim pack. The stim pack should probably be for 50 instead of 100, because as a brimstone, now you also cannot get more smokes per round, so you cannot build up those smokes, you're going to have to buy two per round essentially right so your entire kit is for 650 if you don't have anything because you get one smoke for free but they cannot build up so you cannot build up the economy by doing that so if you're a brimstone player i wouldn't be surprised if for first like few rounds you're never gonna buy a brimstone stim pack because potentially hurting yourself for 200 200 credits will not allow you to buy a big shield at some point or will not allow you to buy one incendiary in example so it's gonna be tough for brimstone mains like i feel like he is on the uh, let's say bad end of the stick i don't know if this is a saying but whatever um so yeah good luck brimstone now cypher um he got buffed by other people's uh other players utility getting nerfed by the you know the, the increase of price he sits there comfortably with his prices because he's everything has for 200 his ult is now for six instead of seven which is a good change because it definitely needed something um but did it need that i'm not sure i feel like keeping it at seven and adding more pulses to it would be a better choice but at the same time, uh, definitely nicer to be a Cypher main since you actually will have a bigger impact since jets will no longer break your wires, which is something that we're going to talk about in the next agent because right now jet is going to be a nightmare to deal with in ranked. And I'm not talking about the opposing jets. I'm talking about the jets that you're going to encounter in your team. 
they are gonna have a very hard time adjusting to those changes because now you cannot really do the mindless stuff that you were doing with the jet before. First, let's talk about what they typed in here. We're we have reverted the jet uh, cipher trapwire interaction. When we initially made this change, there was a strong sentiment about jet feeling weak and cipher. By the way, right? People had no idea what they were talking about. I was one of those people, actually, right? In the beginning of the game, I was like, jet doesn't have any impact. Well, I guess I learned. And Cypher feeling oppressive to play against. As a players as players have gotten better at dealing with Cypher's traps and Jet has carved out a strong value in the game, we think that Jet should have to play and plan around Cypher's deliberate se setup instead of being able to burst through without fault. I 100% agree. So Cypher got a huge buff just because of that. Right? Just because of that, he is back on the menu. Cypher is like really powerful right now. Uh, alongside Killjoy. Both are both are very powerful. But we're gonna go to, to, for that. Mm, you're gonna we're gonna discuss that further. But let's focus on that jet. Now her updraft uh is up in uh in cost by 50, uh, which is not that important, but it does increase a little bit of the economy of, of the player, right? Uh, the Tailwind doesn't break the Cypher Traps wires, which is now you ha actually have to very much think about what you're going to do with the dash and not just be like... Eh, and then we have the biggest change, because that's the biggest change in my opinion. Cloudburst will change from 100 credits to 200. That's a full increase, right? Full increase. Instead of spending 300 credits per round, you're going to spend 600 credits. And now... You have to think about uh, if you're not if you're not a jet player, right? You probably see like how they just dash on side and smoke like random places, or just they smoke every single time something happens. They get, they get scared and like ah, phew, let's smoke. Basically, that's not gonna fly anymore. That's not gonna fly because your utility is so expensive now. Uh, you're gonna be starved for that utility cash. Um, look, think about it this way. Breach had three flashes for 200, and when you, when you were playing Breach, you essentially were playing so many times with small shields, or literally without f third flash, because you just didn't have enough cash, you know? And this is gonna happen now with Jets, but it's also gonna happen more often because of the side effect of the Bladestorm, since you're not able to rack up your cash with the Bladestorm so often, right? Because it's, uh, it's going to be changed from 6 to 7, which is a big, hu huge change, and it's going to make it really awkward to fit into the echoes of, of, um, of the, in the, the flow of the game, because it changes everything. Like, you, you can't really think, oh, it's going to be just one turn later, right? You can't think about it this way. It's going to change the way you plan around it, because most likely, you're not going to have your knives for the eco round, because it's not gonna be ready yet, and you're not gonna get it unless you farm orbs, right? So, or you get in like so many kills, but then you're probably winning anyway, so you don't really need it for the eco round. So my point is, if you don't get it in time for your eco round, you cannot save or use it, right? So you don't build up the economy for the full buy round, because you're gonna get that cash anyway on the full buy round. So it's gonna make it very awkward for Jets, to cheat out, you uh, cheat uh, the economy of the game now with just that one orb increase, which then paired up with the cloud boss change and the updraft, but that's minimal, right? Because you don't really use that that often. Uh, you're gonna have a really hard time building up your economy and playing just the jets that we had before. Even though the operator got a decrease in price, I feel like this is gonna be super impactful because you cannot just you're not gonna be allowed to get to that point where buying an operator will gonna feel comfortable. At least unless you snowball just out of control. Which can happen, but you know. I, dig I digress. In general, Jets, unless you're CNED, you know, in Europe, I don't think you're gonna be as impactful as you think you're gonna be because you're gonna fuck over your team many times just because you're gonna just not have enough cash for utility because you just cannot dash and be like... Phew, 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 free smokes. That's just too much. You have to be very deliberate with it. You need to exactly know what you want to achieve with that smoke, and you want to be precise with it. You just cannot spam it into the ground mindlessly anymore because it's so expensive. So yeah, we're gonna see uh, like playing uh, jet players in the ranked in the first uh, month or two are gonna be a nightmare in your team. Mm, then Killjoy. 
Kildred got a little bit of a nerf, but it's a very impactful nerf, but only really on the highest level. So I'm going to explain why. The Alarmo bot, I don't even really care about the turret that much when you compare it to the Alarmo bot. The Alarmo bot, um, it was used on attack to check corners. You're going to, there's a, such a high, uh, such a long range on, on setting it up. You just sit in a smoke, you put an Alarmo bot in front of you, it activates, so it sits down, it doesn't pick up anything, you recall it. Seven seconds cooldown is nothing. Remember, like I was saying about eight seconds cooldown on Astra, right? This is essentially it. Like seven seconds in this case is almost exactly the same, right? So you can check multiple corners while lurking or while executing with just one Alarmo bot, which is nuts. And that was, but that's only used on the highest level, but you're not going to be able to do that anymore. Or you can just check one corner and that's it because it's going to be 20 seconds cooldown. Now for the turret, this is impactful uh, for retakes. Typically, unless you're playing on Breeze, rotation from one side to another, right? From like A to B on most maps and Heaven uh, will be from C to A, will take around 10 to 10 seconds. That, that's that's, that's going to be the average time of running through with a knife from one side, from the furthest to the longest, you know, the, the longest track will will get you that far. Like 10, 10 seconds is going to take you uh, to, to go through that path. And... That was enough to have the turret for the retake ready. With 20 seconds, you have to plan ahead, right? Or you have to be slower. So this will be impactful for retakes, but I still feel like this is going to be the most impactful change and not, not this. Uh, but in general, Killjoy is a little bit nerfed, but it, it, her prices did not increase. So if you play a lot of Killjoy, you're not going to feel weird about the economy since you exactly know how it works. You, you have an expensive kit anyway. Uh, so yeah, Killjoy, I don't think there are many, many changes, but she's still in a very good spot. Now, Omen. Paranoia from 400 to 300. That's a great change because now we can uh, play Ghost or Frenzy on the pistol round, which is a big, big, big change. Uh, and, oh yeah, and by the way, when it comes to Jet, what do you buy on pistol round, right? If you buy a Frenzy, uh, you have 350. You can buy one smoke, one updraft. There's nothing else. If you buy a Ghost... You can buy a smoke. One. So if you dash on sight, you're hidden for four seconds. You cannot just respam it with the second smoke. The dynamic of the pistol rounds will be so different. Better, in my opinion. You know? Uh, especially if, if, if there's a jet. Like, she, she just cannot take sight for free and just spam the smokes and be like that. Because, you know, right now, you can just buy a ghost in three smokes and you have 12 seconds control over a spot on the side when you're when your team is creeping up behind you so big 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 change for the pistol round big 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 change and now this is uh, impactful the other way around because now omen is able to buy the paranoia with a gun right so you're able to be aggressive with the rest of the team and not feel really like you know handicapped by playing the classic right or with the shields in this case so you can go aggressive you can be that ghost player that that frenzy player and still have the paranoia to help out your team which is a big change and i and i like that for omen um but uh, he loses on the dark cover and short step uh, cash because you know uh he will not be able to regenerate two smokes like i explained with brimstone like i explained with sky like i explained with uh, sorry not sky but uh well, with Brimson and Astra, right, essentially. Uh, you are not able to build up that economy, right? And he's not a, a cheap uh, uh, cheap, um, cheap agent anymore. Uh, like, he, his entire kit will be 700. So this is actually a pretty big chunk of cash. Uh, the shrouded step, also, you cannot really spam it anymore because it's going to be for 150. Although, who do I lie to right now? No one is spamming that. So, I feel like Omen, good changes overall. In my opinion, I don't think that, that the economy changes for him will be as impactful because you're, you're a cheap agent kind of anyway. You know, you, you don't really use your shrouded step every single round. Uh, but what is the most impactful here, apart from the cost decrease on paranoia, is the cooldown time increase. Because five seconds to get a smoke, that's actually huge. Five seconds on an execute or, or, or like a re-execute on a site uh it's gonna be a huge impact those five seconds this is a very long time when you wait for the smoke to go back to your hands and just smoke something else so 
Uh, I like this. I like this. I like this. It promotes smart play because you're starved for your utility. Phoenix, um, he didn't lose anything, uh, actually, since uh, this also doesn't change anything for his pistol round, right? He still has enough cash to buy a flash and a pistol. He cannot do any more two flashes and shields, which is also very powerful. If someone is very, like, let's say, skilled with a classic, I think Phoenix with shields and double flashes was probably the best buy you can do uh, on a pistol round for him. But he have to be effective with the classic, right? So uh, he's not like a... He's basically the entry tank. You flash, you go in, you like jump around, uh, right click, and, and that's it. But that's not possible anymore. Uh, so you're going to have to like probably play uh, a ghost or a frenzy alongside the flash. Uh, but in general, he doesn't really lose much. And you have to think about one thing. Phoenix likes to hunt people that are easier frags, right? With like lower lower uh, health or, or smaller shields. And in I predict at least that in, in this patch, we're going to have a lot of situations where people are going to play a rifle and a small shield because they just don't have cash. Because the utility is so expensive nowadays, right? And you don't get it for free. So as a Phoenix player, as a, as a Reyna player, you should be indirectly buffed because of that like indirectly buffed just because of the fact that your other opponents will be starved for their equipment. So Phoenix should be in a very good spot in this patch, uh, apart from the fact that there's a new agent that kind of, you know, is a competition for him. But if you like playing Phoenix, I feel like you're going to be happy with this patch overall. Now, when it comes to Rays, oh my God, what just happened here? I don't know what's the model update has been updated with a Polish pass. I don't know. She's Brazilian, not Polish. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is just visual, I guess. Um, her boom bot got increased by 200 credits and her showstopper got increased from 7 to 8. Now, let's take a moment to, to talk about how broken was Ray's during the release. She had two grenades with higher damage. Had to buy 200 for the second one, right? But it also regenerated, so you could have just farmed them if you didn't use one in a round. Boombot was for 200, it was exactly the same right now. And the satchels were actually for 100, but they dealt 75 damage. Like they could two tap a person. They were absolutely insane. They were actually used for damage and not for mobility. They could change to that. So, oh, and the ultimate was for six orbs. Like it was absolutely insane. Raise during the release. From a perspective, like from, from judging from the, like, you know, uh, the perspective of time past, she was broken. Raze was absolutely broken. Like, I thought she was very powerful. I didn't think she was broken. But judging from, from the point where I'm sitting right now, after knowing so much, after the one year of, of Valorant, I can say, safely say, that she was really broken. Now, I like those changes, especially for pistol rounds. You're not going to be able to buy Boombot with a ghost which is a huge huge change and i like that a lot uh it's gonna be less oppressive uh the showstopper is bonkers especially if you get early kills and you know that was possible because of the boom bot in piston round so you're not gonna snowball so hard with rays anymore unless you really pop off and get aces so it's gonna be tough to do right so i like really really like this change to rays Although I would like to rework the ult, but it's still fine. Eight charges for, for, uh, for an ultimate is fine <clears throat> Fine in this case. Reyna, I can exactly say the same about Phoenix. So if you, listen, if you want to listen to my opinion about Reyna, just go back to Phoenix and just change the name. Uh, it's essentially it. Now Sage. Um, Reyna is on, ups, uh, like on, on the upswing. She's going to be good in this patch, as she was before uh, in solo queue. Sage. Now, Sage, ha! Yeah, well, Sage, um, again, she's nerfed. And this time is a, is, a, is a huge one, you know? Like, every single thing that was impactful got changed, got nerfed. Her healing didn't get buffed, so she's in a rough spot right now. If you're a Sage player, I don't really envy you. Because uh, it's gonna be tough, you know? Slow orbs were really meant... Uh, like, we're really used in the same matter. Jet, we're using the smokes. You're scared? Ah! I'm just gonna pop the slow orb. It only costs 100. I can just use it, man. You know? It, it's just... It was so meaningless. 
By meaningless, I mean not the impact of the orb is huge, but it was meaningless to spend it because it just costs nothing. So I like this change. Like, I really like this change because you cannot really mindlessly just use this lower orb and be like, yeah, that's that's okay. You know, you're going to have to, or like, at least you can use it this way, but you're going to have to think harder, how do I buy next rounds to fit everything here? For the barrier orb from 300 to 400, well, her entire kit is now 800. Like, that's that's pretty fucking expensive, you know? Uh, so, yeah, and the resurrection going from 7 to 8. I don't know, man. Like, Phoenix, say, Phoenix stayed at 6, and in my, in my eyes, Phoenix ult is just inherently better than Sage's ult, because you have it, you can use it proactively, you don't have to wait for someone to die, you know? And it's easier to use, and you have the entire kit to farm easier, like the, the, the orb itself. So, Resurrection is in a really bad spot. I feel like Sage is probably one of those agents that lost so much during this patch. It's gonna be very, very tough for Sage, Sage, Sage players to feel comfortable. I, I'm not sure if this is actually a good path for her, but we'll see. We'll have to, like, judge by the time, you know, judge with the time uh, passed. Now, Sky. There's a lot of stuff ha happening here. Sky will lose her third flash charge, but she will now regain charges on a cooldown for her signature. We've made it so Sky no longer needs to put her down, got her gun down to activate Guiding Light and made some quality of life improvements when guiding the projector or letting it fly free. So remember, guys, I, I made the tweet about it, right? That there's no there's no animation like this anymore. When she wants to pop the flash, you just have your gun out and you just flash it by pressing E whatever you do, keep on this, right? So it's way easier to flash people because and be ready to peek. Because of that, I feel like Sky uh, is essentially just a very good duelist right now because she's she's so self-dependent or, self or just independent. You can flash for yourself. You can be very aggressive. And I feel like a good aggressive Sky player is going to be worth gold. Like, really. I feel like she's going to be way more impactful than a potential Reyna than a phoenix, than a <laughs> Yoru, uh, or, or anyone else that has flashes, really. Like Sky, I feel like she's gonna be nuts. It doesn't matter that the uh, she has a heal and a trailblazer that doesn't really fit a kit for a duelist. Her ultimate and her guiding light are just nuts for a duelist. Like, they are very good to fill... The needs, the, the needs for the duelist. So she's, in my eyes, she's not really an initiator. She, she's a very aggressive agent. So, but when you want to be the most supportive player, Trailblazer got buffed insanely big by increasing the vision, vision radius by 500 units. It's huge. That's literally huge. That's almost one third of the radius, radius increase. So... She's able to scout way more now with, with the Trailblazer, and her stun got buffed by one second. That's huge as well. Uh, so, you know, she doesn't have the third flash, but let's talk about that. Charges reduced from 3 to 2. Charges now no replenish on a 40 second cooldown. Uh, which, by, by the way, when I was speaking with Riot, and I didn't know how to want to change Sky, I was like... I feel like both Breach and Sky should just reduce their flashes from 3 to 2. And when the, when the flashes go to 0, you should get a third one back at 45 seconds cooldown. I didn't know that this is going to happen. So I'm actually very happy to hear uh, that my idea was the same idea that the devs had themselves. Because that puts me in a spot where I'm just happy because I feel like I know how the developers think about the utility in the game. So as an analyst, you know, on VCT, this gives me the confidence that I actually know what I'm talking about. So pretty, you know, proud of myself here. Um, this is, we talked about that. Guiding legs projector now goes around corners tighter when free flying and is more responsive to guiding. That's cool. I don't know really what the changes, right? Because we can't really see it, how much, how big of the changes are, are there. Uh, but this is, uh, this is really, really cool. Uh, now we have audio attenuation when cast reduced from 3.2 to 1.2k. Attenuation? What's that? Attenuation. Eh? 
Oh. So if I'm not mistaken, what does what does that mean? Is that the cast sound is reduced, at least in length. So people are not gonna hear when you start flashing. I'm not sure if the, when cast or activated is the point here, because there are two options. Either it means when you initially cast the bird, that sound is harder to hear now, or the actual pop of the flash is harder to hear. We're gonna have to check it in game. Like I'm not sure. Like either of those. Then the cost of the charges increased from 100 to 250, as every other flash in the game. But I, I do feel that um, Sky and Breach gained so much from this patch, they're actually just kind of insane. Like, it's, it's really huge. Like, Breach and Sky, you're not going to have two of those on the same team, I think. Uh, but both of them will be very effective, and people who mained them should be very happy with the changes uh, because they're now also main, less mindless, right? Breach was just spam flashing and that's it. And Sky was spam flashing and that's it. And now you have to be a little bit more smarter with the utility. So this promotes higher level of play and I'm very happy with this. Now, Sova, this guy got bit. His shock dots are going from 100 to 150. I'm not happy with this. I'm really not because I feel like shock dots are just so much needed to deal with a Cypher or a Killjoy uh, to destroy the utility, and now it's going to be more expensive to do that every round. Uh, Recon Bolt got increased from 35 to 40, 40 seconds just to fit the other cooldown on other rechargeable skills. I feel like that's okay, because Recon Bolt is a very powerful tool. Owl Drone got from 300 to 400, 400, which I do agree with, because I feel like the drone is very powerful, but I think I would have left it at 300 and just decreased the HP on it, so it's easier to deal with on pistol rounds. So, and you can still be a fragger since you can buy a ghost. Now, if you buy a drone in pistol round, just the way you know it, it happened to with Rays, you're not gonna be able to buy a gun, which is a big deal. You can buy a frenzy, you can buy a, a ghost. So this is a huge, huge change for Sova. Not gonna like. I'm not sure what's, what happened here, but okay. I don't think that this is necessary, but Sova got bit. Like, really. Uh, like, uh, uh, good thing I'm not playing him anymore that much. So, uh, yeah, Sova lost a lot, and uh, he's also going to be a little bit more deliberate uh, with his utility buys, because now he's going to cost 700 instead of 500 He was very cheap before. So while he was one of the most high picks in, in general... He's so, such a powerful agent. Now he got literally nerfed in every single angle, right? Now, this is going to be interesting. Snakebite from Viper got nerfed. But I don't think it's a nerf. I actually do think this is a buff. The Snakebite, now duration reduced from 8 seconds to 6.5 seconds. Um, now you're going to think, oh, now the post plans will be easier to manage, right? I don't really care about that. Really? I think there's a huge over-exaggeration of the problem with the post plan lineups because I feel like they are impactful only when you're already winning, right? It's either the last resort or the, and like a Hail Mary play, right? Which can your opponents can abuse or is you already won the round, essentially. You got the side. And you have your utility still because, you, you know, the other people are dead. So it's like a 5v3 retake. And you're just sitting with your two snake pies and be like, yeah, I can do this. But you don't, you don't need it to win it. You can still play with your team on site and just use the snake bites to do something else with them. You don't have to play for the snake bites. You can actually be and uh, with your team and support them with actually boots on the ground and not just standing in a corner on a, next to a fountain looking at the sky. So why do I think this is a buff? Because now uh, the snake bite is going to be more efficient. The damage is still the same. It deals 158 damage over the over the duration of the of the molly, right? But since the the duration got reduced from eight seconds to six point five, 
uh, and the outer edges of the Viper's acid patch form faster to ensure it is lethal with a, if an enemy sits in the entire duration, right? So it's like the animation of the spread out is faster. You're going to deal more damage with it. And you're going to pressure your opponents faster because when you're checking a corner with the snake bite, people typically ignored it for a few seconds because they knew it doesn't really deal that much damage. Now, with this, this is going to be very pressing. You cannot really ignore it anymore. You, you are in this molly, you have to get out. Like, the DPS increase is actually quite huge. And because of that, I feel like, at least to my, for my playstyle, this is a huge buff. You know? I feel like this is a huge buff for my own playstyle on Viper. So I'm pretty happy with this. Yoru. <laughs> okay, well, he's gonna get a rework or something that doesn't... Like, he got nerfed. That's about it. Like, we don't even... I'm not even gonna discuss this. He, he's gonna, at some point in the next two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, he's gonna get a, a huge buff or rework, whatever, because he's definitely not in a spot where Riot is happy about him. All right, now weapon updates. Uh, there's a huge, huge change in the weapons uh, inventory. Since launch, running gun has been a hot topic. While we believe that there are certain situations that moving and shooting should be powerful, it is currently more potent than we'd like. This patch tag is a piece of the puzzle that we haven't touched before, which is what we call tag into accuracy. Tag into accuracy is our internal name for a phenomenon where a fully running player starts firing at you without slowing down. Then you shoot him and hit him. Applying the tag and debuff and slowing them down, this inadvertent oh my god the word inadvertently drops their speed enough to make their bullets more accurate, even if they aren't trying to come to a stop. This behavior is a root cause of a lot of run and gun clips we see, and the changes this patch should mit mitigate the effectiveness of this, particularly at longer ranges. All in all, our aim is to better reward proactive and precise movement. So. Uh, this is this is a very good change. I'm not certain how much of an impact it will be without playing for like an extended period of time. We probably can make another video in like a month uh, after I, I play a lot. Uh, but this sounds like a very good change. And there were many situations when you just full sprint, you get a body shot from a Vandal, you get slowed down so much, you just spam the guy and he's dead. He essentially counter strafed you, right? You get the point, right? This is not going to happen anymore. You actually have to stop yourself. So you're not going to help. You're not, not going to get help from your opponent when you try to shoot him anymore. And this is a huge change. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I feel like this is going to change a lot. And a lot of better habits will be essentially put on a spotlight and, and show that people don't really have good movement anymore. So we'll see. We'll see. With slightly reduced tagging, tighter dead zones and overall less accuracy in movement states, we aim to tighten up combat while trying to maintain as much intuition and muscle memory as possible. Walk shooting, not run shooting, has been reasonably accurate in Valorant, allowing players to get off semi-accurate shots even at mid-range. With the changes to walk accuracy, shooting while walking will be significantly less effective at medium ranges, rewarding players who are proactively st stopping before shooting. Good change in general. Like I don't have to add anything here. Like this is semi. Uh, sorry, this is not semi. This is just rhetoric. We've also reduced the running accuracy of sidearms and SMGs in an attempt to tighten up engagements with those weapons while maintaining some of the identity in terms of mobility by being able to move and shoot somewhat accurately at shorter ranges. So I'm not a personally I'm not a fan because I feel like SMGs and pistols were in a great shape in this game. They allowed you to be very mobile which fits the theme of the guns uh we'll see how without playing for an expensive amount of time mm, it's hard to say if this is if those changes are too much or too or not enough uh but uh yeah i'm i'm wor worried that playing a specter will not be that good anymore and the gun wasn't really that great to begin with so I, I'm a little bit worried about that, but, but we'll see, we'll see, okay? Bullet tagging changed from 75% slow to 72.5 slow. So when you get a hit, you are a little bit less slowed, right? It's not a big change. 2.5% of a 75% slow. I don't think it's going to be noticeable, but we'll see. 
maybe i don't know maybe maybe when you play 240 fps and you know you actually play a lot and you're you're super fast your reaction times are super fast as well then you might notice this but for mo for the majority of the players probably including me uh i will not notice this or or if i will it probably be my placebo but we'll see Weapon dead zones change from 30% to 27.5%. Dead zone environment refers to the movement speed of a player. Uh, sorry, of the, the refers to the movement speed a player becomes inaccurate. So essentially, um, let's say your movement speed is 100. At 30 speed, you were fully accurate. Now you're gonna be fully accurate when you reach 27.5. So you have to be slower to be accurate. Uh, still a very small change, but this one will be definitely more noticeable because it affects your shooting, like every single duel is going to be affected by that. And not only when you're going to get damaged when your movement doesn't really matter that much. Like this is an impactful 2.5% because it might actually change you shooting your first bullet in a wall somewhere up top instead of a guy on your cursor. Now, all rifles, walking and accuracy change from 1.3 to 2.0 and running unchanged at 5.0. I mean, that's okay. You, should, you shouldn't you should shoot your rifle while walking, anyway. Unless the guy is just next to you kissing your forehead. Heavies, uh, they got nerfed significantly while walking. Like, this is huge. Well, what the fuck? From, z from 0 0.5 to 2.4. That's like... <laughs> they added basically a 2.0. <laughs> That's that's crazy. Uh, so yeah, walking with an Ares or a Odin is definitely not a choice now anymore. And it wasn't really a choice to begin with unless you ADS before. So this probably will make ADSing almost impossible while walking. Like you cannot crab walk anymore with, with an Odin, which was a, a, an option before. SMGs from 1.3 to 1.0. Walking in accuracy, by the way. Like this is huge. That's a triple increase of the inaccuracy. So uh, it's tough to like change, like check it because I'm not able to like swap between patches and see what the difference actually feels like. But I'm a little bit worried that SMGs now with this with this change will be pretty bad. And remember, Stinger was already ultra bad. Like I don't know, man. Stinger with with more like nerves on, on this. I don't know. Even with the price change, I don't think it might be good. Classic walking and accuracy change from 25 to 84. Like classic was so inaccurate already. I don't know. I feel like you either full sprint and jump and right click and then it's accurate, or you just crouch. I don't like that that's it. It's gonna be tough with the classic. You, you cannot really walk anymore with it. You can't really just shift and like we'll see frenzy uh i'm fine with this nerf like frenzy definitely should be nerfed when when it got it, its price buffed by 50 so if if it gets the walking and accuracy and the running and accuracy this is the bigger bigger change like the walking and accuracy isn't really that big of a deal when you compare it to the running and accuracy changing from 1.0 to 2.0 like this is a huge difference this is a an entire difference right from 1.0 to 2.0 uh this gun should be way, way less impactful in the pistol rounds. But again, this gun was already nerfed and it was still very good. So we'll see. But this this uh, bodes well for the future of pistol rounds alongside the utility changes, right? And uh, the way that you're not going to just spam everything in pistol round. Uh, now, wait. Oh, no, never mind. They only changed the price of, of Snakebite. But a good talking point about Viper, uh, which I, I should add. Uh, on a pistol round, you're not gonna buy shields, snake bite, snake bite, toxin orb. You're probably gonna just go for a ghost and one snake bite or the actual orb. Like I feel like in pistol rounds now you're not gonna be able to play post plant lineups unless you want to not buy anything apart from utility, which is an option and it's definitely something that some players will do. But you definitely sacrifice a lot of um, power, potential power, uh, in those pistol rounds. So, good changes overall, you know? Uh, Ghost, running in a cruise change from 1.85 to 2.3. I don't know about that, Jack. I, I feel like Ghost was really fine, but 
Okay, we'll see. Uh, Sheriff walking accuracy changed by a huge markup. And running accuracy got changed by 50%. So, uh, and this is the thing. I feel like Sheriff was the only gun and Guardian. Uh, Sheriff and Guardian were the only gun when I saw the problem with you walking and shooting. Or like crouching and walking while shooting. Like that was problematic. And and for Sheriff, because it was very accurate. And now this is gonna be not gonna be a thing because it got nerfed significantly. Uh so yes, Sheriff gets a huge nerf, but at the same time, I feel like Sheriff gets an indirect buff because he's gonna be a viable choice for the pistol rounds now. Like I was always mad when someone was buying Sheriff in my team uh in ranked, because I was like, that makes no fucking sense. People play classic shields and then you essentially play against a 150 shield guy because you're not going to be able to kill him twice in the body right sheriff is the best counter to unarmored 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 shieldless opponents you just double tap them and they die two two body hits bam bam they're dead that's 100 damage. So Sheriff in a metagame where people will buy Frenzies or Ghosts is probably the best choice to play against them. And then, you know, with the price increase of the utility, I feel like a lot of players can actually play with the Sheriff, like Reyna, uh, maybe Brimstone. Probably not. No, 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 not Brimstone. But, but uh, Reyna definitely. Ray's right? Because she's gonna still have the grenade, and you're not gonna buy any gun with the boom bot anymore. So Raze, Reyna, uh, Viper maybe even, to some degree, but I probably wouldn't do it. And uh, on attack, probably Cypher, I would say, you know? Those are the agents that probably would benefit the most out of them, uh, out, of the, out of the Sheriff. Maybe even say nah, nah, Sage now. Yeah, but those those three would definitely uh, benefit the most uh, out of the sheriff in pistol round nowadays, which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Now, um, judge gets a huge nerf on the price by two hundred fifty. It's a huge change. Alongside the utility changes, like you're not gonna buy judge that often. And I was a abuser of judge in ranked lately, like for the past two months or something. Like judge is just nuts. I, I can't remember the last time I bought Spectre. The judge is just so much better. And with this change, it's not gonna be lethal that much above 10 meters, right? But I will tell you one thing. They're gonna if you know how to play judge, you're gonna like reduce the amount of engagements that are gonna be over 10 meters. So it's still gonna be lethal and it's still gonna be very good and still people will still get pissed when you when you judge them. Uh but you're just not gonna judge them that often because of the price change. The damage is like eh whatever. If you play smart, your judge is gonna be as lethal as it was before. Bulldog. Who knew this gun was gonna get a buff? 50%, sorry, 50 credits decrease price and the firing rate in full auto mode increased by 35 RPS. So this is not much. Unlucky that I didn't get a buff on the right click as well. Uh, I don't think this changes much, to be honest. I really don't like this gun. I would always prefer to buy a judge uh, than a bulldog, even on attack. Because on attack, you can still tailor your movement to effectively use the judge. Unless it's Breeze uh, or Icebox. But, you know, even on Icebox, you can do that effectively. Even on Icebox, you can play Judge effectively, but definitely not on Breeze in most cases. So Bulldog, niche choice, whatever. Short key, not a big of a deal. Maybe. Maybe Jets will gonna start playing again shorties. That was a metagame sometime, bef like before the Frenzy metagame. Like, Jets were buying shorties because they just dashed into lamps on bind and just played shields shorty and they killed the guy, pick up his gun, and, and that's about it, right? And you're going to be able to do that because you buy 550 shorty shields and you have 250 left so you can buy uh, one smoke. Well, it sounds kind of bad. But it is, it is a possibility. I don't think that people, many people will do it, but it is a possibility. It's a very 
glass cannoning glass cannony feeling to it because you have to dash without the smoke right you shoot if you miss then you smoke it and you reload to re-engage with the shorty but if you smoke first to dash into it then if you miss your shorty you're dead because you have no smoke to just basically play around the reload so yeah we'll see stinger it's garbage like if nothing else could change with stinger it's still gonna be garbage and i don't think a 150 credits decrease will change much honestly i don't think that that changes much we'll see but i feel i was a big fan of stinger before like before the nerf and now i'm a let's say not a fan so i don't think this this will change much bucky not worth mentioning too much marshall now this is actually quite nice quite quite nuts the decrease of the 50 credits, I don't feel like much, but when you consider the, the gun cost did cost 1.1k before, and now it costs 950, I feel like it's straight up better Sheriff. I feel like it's a straight better up Sheriff. If I'm not mistaken, if my memory serves me right, we can you can tell me in the, cred, uh, in the comments. Uh, I feel that the Sheriff has a fa faster fire rate. Uh, sorry, the Marshal has a faster fire rate then Sheriff, and it has high damage, has very accurate hip fire, and if your opponents are very far away, you have a scope. So it literally feels like a better gun. It literally feels like it's almost a Guardian, you know? But it costs 950, so why would you buy the Sheriff for 800 when you can just add 150 and have a better gun? Which, by the way, kills someone in the head over 30 meters, which is not something the sheriff will do. Like, the upside of the marshal over the sheriff is huge, and I will probably never buy a sheriff again if I have enough cash to buy a marshal. You know? And I probably will tailor my economy to buy those marshals on lower buys. Um, Ares is a good gun. So the decrease of 50 actually makes me happy, you know? It's a good gun, really. Really a good gun for round two buys, especially if you play like on a like on a sova or in a play in a spot that just benefits you from melting like a sova, uh, sorry, sage wall or something like that. It's a huge fan of, of Ares. So uh, this actually makes it a, a better choice because 50 credits is going to be a lot. Like, you know, it's a lot. Operator from 5 to 7.k, 7.7. as a good change because I feel like in some time we're not going to see that many jets. So the gun was a little bit over nerfed. And hopefully it will uh, be a better choice uh, in the future. And 300 credits is a huge difference. So we'll see. Guardian price decrease by 150. I don't know. Just the only map I feel like I can buy Guardian a lot is Breeze because of the huge, huge ranges there. And if I only if I'm playing Reyna. So I can just buy Guardian small shields and this is going to cost me 2.65, 2,650. Right? That's not a lot. Like you can do that on, on, uh, on off buys and you can still probably have enough cash for the full buy. Or a Vandal Shields. Like, that's pretty... If you're if you're able, as a Reyna, every single round, to essentially have a rifle, right? Even when you sacrifice, like, full shields on this map, where, where everyone almost plays Vandals anyway. So, in most cases, the duels are not really that important When if you have 125 or 150. I feel like on that map, this price change will be impactful on another ones, not so really. At least I think so. We're gonna test it out. We're gonna play, you know, a lot of Reyna probably on, on Breeze, unless I'm gonna just play in KO. Alright, title matchmaking. Um for competitive updates, apparently uh it's gonna be easier to um it's gonna be easier to be getting out of your hard stack feeling on all the accounts. Like an example, my main account, I just feel like I'm I'm kind of stuck at the Immortal 3 level. Maybe I'll get the Radiant. I don't know. We'll see. That's what they say. Uh, they owe me a Radiant, right? So we'll see. Uh, anyway, jokes aside, um, a lot of people complain that, you know, they played the game so much, they actually feel they improved, but they're still stuck in like silver or gold. And they play on a, on a, on a Smurf, right? And then that Smurf actually gets a way higher rank. 
And that kind of makes sense because your MMR is just ducked because of the way you were learning the game, right? And this change, its goal is to reflect that, like the way that you play better, so it's easier for you to get out of those ranks that the game feels that you don't belong to anymore, you know? Like, uh, and that's, that's a good change. Matchmaking accuracy will improve across all ranks, which should lead to a smoother ranked climb and reduce how hard you may swing up and down in rank. While winning games is still the most important factor, individual performance will also be accounted for to improve matchmaking at Immortal Plus. Very happy with that. This should result in better matches at the highest levels. Awesome. Looking forward to that. Close games will have smaller effect on rank rating gains and losses. Also a good change. Adjusted on rank rating curves, so climbing or falling should feel less volatile. Also a very good change. I don't know exactly the numbers, but this just sounds nice. Updated rank distribution. Mystery here. Placement raised to Diamond 1. Now remember, in Diamond 1 you can still stack. So in the first day of ranked, all the Radiantite, um, Radiant uh, players or the High Immortal players will probably 5 stack and play together during the placements uh, just because of that. And that's a little bit awkward. I don't like this. I really don't. I really don't. So essentially, uh, if you're a Radiant player, you will be able to play, if you have 100% win rate during the placements and after placements, you're going to be able to play seven matches as a five stack because you get you get put to Diamond 1, and then from Diamond 1, if you're Radiant, you get plus 50 for a win, so you need to win two more matches to get from Diamond 1 to Diamond 3, right? Because you skip a rank, and then in Diamond 3, you have to play solo or duo. But it really does feel that you can abuse the system by playing the five stacks for seven matches. Not a fan here. Not a fan because that was a very big problem in the start of episode two, when as a solo player myself and Radiant at that point, my account got fucked sideways because of this. Like I was playing solo in the beginning of the act while playing in Radiant lobbies with stacks, with like three people, four people, five people. Like it really was an awful experience. And because of that, I probably will not play on my main account for the first week or two, and I'm just gonna learn KO on my second account, where I have also Immortal, but I feel like I less attached emotionally to it, I guess, you know? So I'm just gonna try to learn KO on that account and just play Viper back on, on my main account uh, later on. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Um, performance updates, apparently we're gonna get 6% performance increase, which is awesome. Uh, and you can now invite to party with right ID in custom game. So this is nice because you don't have to add a streamer. You don't have to add people to your friend list to actually play with them. Pretty nice. Kill feed looks super cute now. It also shows, uh, uh, it also shows assists, which is awesome. I really like the new look of this. Very, very nice and clean. And it's going to take time some use. Uh, it's going to take some time to get used to it, but I really like it. Um, a round rollback feature for tournament mode ga custom games, that's pretty awesome. So people can uh, easily remake like rounds. Progression updates. I don't think we can dis we should discuss this because this is basically no nothing important. This is like cosmetics and shit. Uh, the bugs, uh, from what I read before, there's absolutely nothing really that we should discuss because those are just, you know, cool that they fixed it. That's about it. Um, but I didn't fix the volume slider. Riot, I beg you. Anyway, I think this is it. Wow, that's a long video. One hour and four minutes. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. This was a very long video. I hope you guys liked it. Leave a comment. <laughs> if you are at the end, right? If you're going to reach to the end of this, this video... Say the code name. Say the code name. Gods must be crazy in comments. I'm gonna love you for that. I'm gonna give you a personal comment for that as well. All right. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys on stream.